Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Tim Cyclesman Wood, editor of Cycles News and Views on Cyclesman.com. Welcome back to the show, Tim. Jim, thanks as always for having me. Tim, with red boards uh, all around the world, it seems, on the major stock markets now for several days. Are we seeing the bursting of the bubble of all bubbles? Jim, I think so. You know, as this market has continued higher and higher, I've said that it was in association with an increasingly more dangerous bubble. And I've also uh, given my subscribers detailed economic data proving that this was on the back of the weakest economic recovery since the Great Depression, and you and I have talked about some of that at a high level. Um, we've seen this bubble um, blow increasingly higher, or as it's blown increasingly higher, we've seen um, cyclical distortions and, and odd cyclical phasings and other peculiar behavior. But it's all been accomplished or on the back of um, this liquidity infusion and constant manipulation interference with the natural rhythm of the market. Uh, we've seen practically every cycle, or excuse me, every technical discipline and every statistical norm discredited. And again, that's all come because of a, uh, or as a result of this, um, you know, um, intervention that we've seen. And the intervention has come obviously in the form of the liquidity and the economic propaganda that we've been hearing, just outright propaganda, uh, with the, the job report, I say job reports, the fluffed reports, uh, it's not just the jobs report, that's among the many that have been um, used to create an illusion of the economy that's not really real. But, you know, as this has all continued, I have explained that we had to see the proper structure. And that structure has not set up. It, you know, that's been the thing. It's been, it's been with this manipulation. It's been, it's just been uh, an ongoing thing. Every time you try to get a little setup, it get, you know, it just never would stick. Never would stick. And uh, you know, but that's been the key. I said we have to have the proper structure. Well, in the February research letter, which you have a copy of, um, I explained the structure that was then trying to take hold and gave specifics to watch for. And then in last weekend's update, um, I said that, you know, based on the additional developments that we had seen the previous week, that equities were at a, a high-risk juncture and that they were in a vulnerable, vulnerable position. And anyone reading my letter and updates, they should know exactly what has happened. And uh, I'll have more details, of course, in the upcoming in March letter and, and, and short-term updates. But <clears throat> in short... Um, the structure has broken, and uh, if there's any normalcy left in this market, um, it, it, it's like I said, it's broken, and it comes down now to how well the Fed. It's it's really I say how well the Fed. It's really the market structure versus the Fed, and how well they can they can control it. But it's broken now. When you're in a situation like this, Tim, what do you do? Well, it, <laughs> I. I you know, from my perspective, I mean, get out of the way and hope for the best. Um, I mean, I don't know how to answer that question. We've seen this go on for, for it, what, as long as you and I have been doing the interviews, it has been, like I said, an ongoing thing of, of trying to hold this thing up for, for years, and they've blown it into the largest bubble in history ever, and like I said, we have been, it, 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 the, the, the reason it's been able to continue is because it's worked. It, and it's worked because there has not been structure. Now we have structure. So where we go and how it unfolds, I mean, 
every top, I've talked about this before, every top has to have structure to break. Just like the market has to have positive structure to go up, it has to have some sort of a, you know, a, a, a negative structure. Something has to turn before it can go down. And that has not, it hasn't occurred. The last time we had some structure for a downturn was, well, we, we had structure in 2007 and we had got that decline. Obviously there was, there was structure in 2000 and, uh, 2000 with, with that top. We got, we got structure. I say we haven't had structure. We, we, we got structure at the 2018 top, but, eh, you know, it, 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 it didn't, it, it wasn't significant and then it, we were going into a four year cycle low and they was able to, to pull it out of that. Here, I think it's a little different. I mean, we have, we have significant structure in place and it's just a matter of how does it unfold? And when I say how does it unfold, I mean, is this going to be like a 2000 top where in January 2000, um, the, the, the market structure fell in place, it topped, and then it just kind of was a slower grind down into the 2002, 2003 low over time? Or is it going to be more like 2008? Uh, is it going to be more like, um, you know, the 66 uh, to 74 period? I don't know what that's going to look like. Uh, that's something I'll be covering in the letters as as that evidence presents itself. But as far as the structure, it's broken. And the question is, how well can they contain it? And I guess one question is, can they save it? And I, I, I just don't see that. Uh, I guess anything's possible, but I don't see that it, it, it be, because of, like I said, the, the, the structure that, that has transpired. And so I just think it's a matter of, of what it looks like. Tim, of course, everybody is blaming the coronavirus for this big decline on the major markets but it seems to me every major decline has been blamed on something and then you look back uh, in the past and you find out no the market was just structured for a giant correction and that particular thing happened to be a coincidence happening at the same time absolutely that is 100 percent correct and i even said in the february letter you know i addressed the the coronavirus is it you know trying to say because people had asked you know what do you think and it was starting to affect uh, um, or people were starting to talk about it affecting the Chinese market is that going to have an effect on us so I covered it and 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 talked about that there and there's always something there's always like you say that reason but that structure has to be in place and specifically in the letter I talked about how it was mighty peculiar how they both came together at the same time and now it's convenient that in it even said this in the letter as well, that it's, it's mighty convenient that now Trump can't be blamed. Not that I'm trying to blame him. I'm just saying he, the administration can't be blamed. Um, Powell can't be blamed. The Fed can't. I mean, hey, it's not our fault. But in reality, you know, <laughs> the, the, uh, the powers that be have blown it into the bubble that it is. But now it's nobody's fault because we have something we can blame it on. And, you know, I guess, I guess Trump can blame it on Powell not doing cutting rates enough. You know, I was looking at articles before we came on. He's been, um, even as early as, uh, uh, November, there was still some talk about him suggesting that he should cut further, cut further, cut further. And, um, so the blame game, my point is the blame game going to start and it has nothing to do with the coronavirus. The setup was there and that just kind of pushed it over the edge, I guess. We'll have more with Tim Cycles Man Wood right after this. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. 
surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines. Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Tim Cyclesman Wood. Tim, once the bubble of all bubbles bursts, is there any way to predict how far things can fall? That is something ongoing that I will be, you know, trying to get some projections on as we move forward. Um, you know, typically bubbles decline to the to the point in which the bubble began, and that's the subjective question. You know, I was talking. I don't even want to go there at this point, but but I think I think we're in for far more of a ride um, than people perceive here. I don't I don't think people realize what has happened here. And like I said, I don't mean to, to sound, on the one hand, overly bearish because let me tell you right now what's what's going to happen. Uh, I, I mean, short term, I think we are moving into some lows. This market is very oversold, and it's going to bounce. And how long that bounce lasts, I don't know. Somebody break out their crystal ball. Um, but based on these higher degree, um, you know, setup that is in place, this higher degree structure and the, the breaking that that uh, of that structure that has occurred. It's it's it should be counter trend, and again, I don't know what I, I, you know. I don't know what this is going to look like, but it should be broken. So, um, I guess the point is is that um, ultimately we go down. Uh, just what that path looks like, I don't know. As far as the ultimate um, target, you know, I looking at the cyclical picture, you know, I don't see a low in this market for. You know, looking at the long-term cycles for three years um, before we get into the next four-year cycle low. So, um, you know, there's a lot of room for it to run. Again, how that transpires exactly is something we'll be looking at based on the cyclical structure as it develops. But for now, the setup's in place and the crack has occurred. Now, uh, during this uh now, 12 year run with this particular market. We've had 20% corrections in the past a couple of times. A lot of people are saying it's going to be the same this time. Can you actually say that with any confidence? I, I can't say that. And I don't want to say, I, here's the thing. Here's what I'm, here's what I'm, let me, let me explain something. I have learned in this business never say never. And I've also learned never underestimate the Fed because they have done a magnificent job at, at, at blowing this up like they have. And I don't think anyone, I mean, if they do, I, I, I mean, they're, they're not being forthright. Anyone that could have said they foresaw this going to this degree, they're just full of themselves because it has exceeded every historical norm. Like I said, every technical discipline, everything. I mean, it's just there's there's no precedence to to make a statement like that. So we have been dealing with this extreme abnormality, and so with that said, never underestimate the Fed. Can they pull a rabbit out of a hat again? Maybe. But again, I go back to hanging my hat on the structure. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think this is like the other cracks. Now, if, if, if something should develop and, and, and where that picture starts to change, then so be it. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to stand in front of that again. But looking at what I see right here, right now, no, I don't think this is the same thing that we've seen with some of these other cracks. I think this is more like, I think this is at least like 08, but probably more significant than that because it should be the unwinding of of the top. And let me let me let me let you understand in my brain, in my head as to what I'm why I'm saying that. I don't think this market can take too much of a decline without a total unwinding. And so I, I, I just you know I, I I don't think it can be. I don't think we're dealing with the same animal we have been. In other words, uh, just because of the size of it, the momentum takes it down. Kind of like a huge weight, chunk of ice falling I think the off a glacier. Of it takes it down. Yeah, and, and can you maybe explain that? Well, I think it's just so it's been built. It's like the house of cards. It's like the the, the house being built on a poor foundation. 
it has it has had no substance. And and some people will argue, well, we've had you know because I mean when I said propaganda, that's what I meant. On the one hand, we hear all the positive, um, you know, talk about the job growth and 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 our job creation and how great the economy is and so on and so forth. That's what I've been presenting in the letter. That's not true. Though there's facts. I mean, I have the hard data, the facts. This this has all been built on the worst economic recovery since the Great Depression. End of story. No, I mean it's just it's it's fact. You can see the data, and so I don't care what all the other propaganda, what they tell you. It's not true, and so. With that said, there is no economic foundation. It has been a, a bubble that has been built on monetary policy or has occurred on, on the back of monetary policy without a sound underlying economic uh, expansion. And so that, combined with the, the cyclical break that has occurred, it's going to be, I'm not going to say it's impossible because, like I said, I've learned never underestimate the powers that be, but it's going to be damned hard to resurrect this at this point. So I think it's broken. We'll have more with Tim Cycles Man Wood right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Tim Cycles Van Wood. Tim, what kind of reaction do you expect from the Fed when it comes to interest rates? Do they think that can deal with a big crash? <laughs> Definitely going to be cutting. Um, you know, we've been saying, or I've been saying, that um, lower rates were going to prevail. We had longer-term cycles that bottomed um, back in December. I lose track of time now. Back in December of 2018. And then, you know, from there we started to see the longer-term end start to decline. And then finally, I think it was in May. I'm not looking at a chart, but the best I can remember, it was in May. We started to see the short end start to decline. And then we got into that August time period, and we got into what you would call a um, kind of a the, the, the little middle portion of this um, of this inversion yield curve inversion, and and we had a little bit of a reprieve, and you know the markets rallied, and everybody thought that everything was okay, it felt okay, and that was kind of the calm before the storm type thing, and now we're out, you know we've come through that that middle portion of that uh, process, and rates have begun to decline again, which is exactly what we what we thought what the cycles suggested. And you know we talked. I think we've talked about that on a number of times, saying that they would cut. I think I made that bold statement. They would be cutting, and and that was because of this cyclical structure um, that I saw in place. And I think that now that also uh, is at play, and uh, we are seeing lower rates. And I think more cuts will come. I don't think that matters. I mean, okay, a quarter point cut is going to fix what? A half a point cut's going to fix what? I mean, okay. Um, but, I mean, it's not going to matter. Uh, but, yes, I do think lower rates are going to prevail. Um, crude oil uh, has cracked. Um, you know, we've, uh, you know, I thought that I say it's cracked. I mean, it's it started to decline. It hadn't cracked yet. I think, I think there's a lot more weakness coming there. Um, you know, the, um, the one, the one holdout, that has occurred, you know, taking a lot longer than I anticipated has been gold. Um, but I think the liquidation is going to come there as well. There's, you know, every indication I'm looking at, you know, it's been relentless, granted. Uh, it's made another push up, granted. But it doesn't change the fact that the underlying data or the overhanging data, however you want to say it, 
is uh, suggestive of that longer-term nine-year cycle top. There's lots of non-confirmations, and once the the, the liquidation really begins, I think that um, it's going to take gold with it, and uh, that's when we see uh, lower crude oil prices, and I think we'll see things like Bitcoin. And I mean, I think that, that you know, when it, when it, when the liquidation really begins, we see it all um, begin to slide. Is that because people have to meet margin calls? I'm sure that's a part of it. The other part, I think, is just you know part of the nature of the unwinding of the bubbles. Are there any so-called safe havens in a time like this? To me, I would just want to be on the side. I'm not giving financial advice, but I would want no part of this. I don't think people understand um, what has happened here. They've been trained and you know to buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. And I have said, uh, or I say I have said, I said when the rally out of the 09 low began, and I did not realize how profound the statement would, would prove to be. But I said the longest, the, excuse me, the longer the rally lasts, the more dangerous it would become. And I had no idea when I made that statement coming out of that uh, four-year cycle low that we would see what we've seen. And um, I think that as a result of you know the Fed you know, constantly having the, um, the 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 markets back here. And, and, and the success that they've had at extending this, people have been trained to buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. And I don't think they understand what has happened here, and that makes it all the more dangerous. And, you know, buying the dip on Monday didn't work. Buying the dip on Tuesday didn't work. Now, like I said, we do have some short-term lows in here. There will be bounces. But I don't think, I don't think that strategy is going to be the same as it has been. And, and, Tim, before we go, we have a listener question from Randall Hansen. And I think it goes along with what you've been talking about. Uh, Randall writes, when it comes to Dow theory, Tim Wood is the best. I would love to hear his opinion on the current status of Dow theory. Has there been a primary trend change or just a bearish non-confirmation? Thanks for all the great shows, says Randall. Randall, thanks for listening. Um, y- y- yes, <laughs> it's, it's broken. And I have, look, I've covered the, the details in the letter. Um, it, but yes, it, it's, it's definitely broken and, uh, those details are explained, um, in the, in the research letter in the short term update. Tim, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. My guest has been Tim Cyclesman Wood, editor of Cycles News and Views on Cyclesman.com. If you have any questions for Tim or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at House Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.